and uh, its effect on the time domain system. By time domain system, I mean that the modulation happens in the time domain and not in the frequency domain. Okay, um, we will see the effect in the frequency domain systems as well um, in the other videos. Um, so current focus is on the time domain systems. So um, in this video, I'm going to show you what the frequency offset is, um, where it exactly it comes from. Uh, then we will try to derive the um, analog equation and the discrete uh, equation for the frequency offset. And then I will show you that how to program the frequency offset on the simulation. Okay. And by the end of this video, I hope that you should be able to figure out just by looking at the constellation that your system is suffering from the frequency offset. Okay. So um, to get started again, um, Let's try to see what, first of all where the frequency offset is coming from and um, if you are familiar with the basics of the up conversion and down conversions on the RF side um, then I think you should be good enough with that. Even if you don't know about this concept then also you should not be bothered about it. Um, but uh, I will try to capture as much information as possible in this video um, but the concept of up conversion and down conversion requires uh, another video, right? So um, what I'll do is I'll start off with the basic understanding that um, we have the baseband signal. So okay, let's start off with um, some hypothesis that we already have the baseband signal and um, we are going to put it into the passband on the TX. Okay, so on the TX side, let's say I am on the TX side and I am going to receive the data from the RX. So on the TX side, the TX I have the baseband. Okay, I have the baseband and then I have the passband. Okay, and let's call it as BB and PB. And same thing happens here as well. So I will have passband, right? The passband will be the first one and then I will go to the baseband. Now, most of the signal processing part and the communication part systems uh, um, algorithms and everything happens in baseband and not in passband. Okay, but the RF sits in the passband. So I have the digitally modulated data so let me change the color so in the baseband what happens in the baseband I have the digitally modulated data okay so digital modulation happens there and um, well this is a, a very simplified version of it um, so digital modulation happens in the baseband and then uh, in order to convert to the passband I have the RF okay I have the RF module and so the digitally modulated symbols they hit the RF module and this RF module is the analog front and it's going to radiate the data over the air and then on the receiver side again I'm going to have the RF okay as the front end and then um, I will have the digitally modulated baseband data okay for me to decode and demodulate so this is how the general structure looks like um, so let me put, the, uh, put it like this, um, just for the sake of clarity. Okay, so this is how the TX and RX, and let's call that this part as the channel. Okay, channel. And uh, for our discussion at this moment in time, we are going to take AWGN channel only. Okay, um, but it should not impact our understanding of the frequency offset. Um, so um, I have taken AWGN so as to be uh, realistic. Um, when we try to introduce the frequency offset, okay, um, but ideally if you don't want AWGN then also it is fine, doesn't matter. Um, so let's say that um, we are in the analog domain, so this is all the discrete, uh, this could be the discrete representation. So um, what I'll try to do is, um, I will try to um, derive the analog equation first and then we will try to relate to the discrete uh, equivalent. So um, I assume that um, we already know the process of up conversion. So in that case, um, when the digitally modulated data hits the RF, okay, we have the um, digital to analog conversion process. Okay, digital to analog conversion happens here at this point. And so from that point on, let me call the, the data that I am transmitting. Um, let me change the color here. Um, so let's say the data that I am transmitting. Um, which I'm supposed to transmit is X of T which is sitting at the baseband okay and um, at the RF I'm going to do the up conversion so I have the oscillator which is going to have the oscillator carrier frequency and I can represent it as e to the power of J Omega times C times T okay I can represent it like this um, 
for those of you who do not understand why this e to the power of j omega c t is there, then um, to simplify, we can say, well, it is the real of it. Okay, it is the real part of it. So, for mathematically, it will be very convenient. Um, but if we are transmitting the complex data with two channels, i channel and q channel, at that time also e to the power of j omega t um, is the uh, appropriate way of representing the signal. Okay, but in that case, I will not have x of t. I will have x of t and y of t sitting in different channels but it doesn't matter um, we have used it for the mathematical convenience if you are not happy with it then we can put real of it okay so basically I am transmitting only a single stream over the air then what happens to the receiver side now receiver when we go for the coherent demodulation okay there is a concept of coherent demodulation so when we do the coherent uh, coherent demodulation um, so what happens in this process is that the receiver, okay, so this entire part is the receiver, right? This block is the receiver block. So the receiver knows in advance that um, what is the frequency that I need to tune to, okay? So the transmitter is transmitting at certain frequency Fc or omega c and the receiver will know it in advance. Okay, so this guy this guy is transmitting something in omega c and this guy knows in advance that well okay I'm expected to tune to the signal um, with omega c okay so um, here what happens is that um, on the receiver side the data which I'm going to receive so let's say the received data um, let's keep the same thing as it is so um, on the receiver side along with the noise and let's say there is some noise that is also coming okay on the signal then on the receiver side um, during the process of uh, down conversion what happens is that I'm going to modulate the received data again with e to the power of j omega c t okay basically so this guy is going to generate the carrier frequencies with omega c which gets multiplied by this guy okay and in the process something happens so let's see what happens in that process so um, let's take real of uh, xt okay xt e to the power of j omega ct okay and times I will have e to the power of j omega times c t which is coming from the receiver end okay and I will have this plus n times t multiplied by e to the power of j omega times c times t Okay, now here what happens is that when you do this multiplication of the two complex sinusoids, then you will end up getting two components. Okay, we get two components. One will be omega. Um, okay, um, let's uh, represent these two frequencies slightly differently. Let's, uh, although they are supposed to be equal, but here we are discussing frequency offset, right? So let me say on the receive on transmit side we have omega c, and on the receive side we have let's say omega dash c. Okay. Let, let's do it like this so that things become more clear. So now what happens is that when you multiply two sinusoids of two different frequencies, I'm going to end up uh, having the two components. One will be omega, so one is omega c, omega dash, and the other component that I will get is omega c minus omega dash. Okay, and um, usually on the receiver side, what we do is we we filter it out. We filter out the higher frequency component through the low pass filter. So whatever remains is that is omega c minus omega dash of c. So let's say that um, I have filtered out. So let us have the low pass filter. Okay, let us have the low pass filter which is going to filter out this component. So in that case what we'll be left with will be the real component real of x t. Okay real of xt and let's change the color here um, okay let's take the green um, so what we'll get is e to the power of j it will be omega c minus omega dash of c times t okay and plus um, there will be some noise so let me represent this uh, whatever the noise component by nt okay so basically this noise component has also got filtered out it also so the idea is that well um, I'm not representing this noise by the analytical equivalent I'm just saying well it is NT it is something it is some noise which is getting added to this which has got modulated by e to the power of j omega t and then it has got filtered out okay so um, what we get in the final equation is something like this okay this is what we get finally 
at the end of the day so uh, maybe we can put real here as well um, just for the sake of completion okay so this is what we are getting here now the idea is that if omega c if omega dash c which is on the receiver side if the oscillator frequency on the receiver side is same as the oscillator frequency on the tx side then these two components will cancel out so what we will be left with will be the real of it will be real of xt e to the power of j0 right a to the power of j0 t plus nt okay so in that case what i'll be left with this will be the xt and with with some noise okay noise will be left so this is the perfect scenario but usually it doesn't happen so when what happens is that on the receiver side and the tx side there will be the oscillator mismatch okay so i cannot always tune the oscillator exactly at the same frequency as this one because the oscillator itself has got some inherent defect in it so as a result what will is going to happen is over the period of time um, you will see the frequency offset. So these two guys will not be same. Okay, there will be slightly, there will be slight variation over the period of time. And in that case, um, what we are going to have this component is not going to be equal to zero in that case. So then what happens? If it is not zero, then what? Okay, so if it is not zero, then in that case, what we will be left with will be x t. Okay, x t e to the power of j, and so it will be delta omega times t so delta is the difference between omega c minus omega dash okay omega dash c plus nt so this is what we'll be left with so at the end of the day so if you're wondering that where this uh, phase component is coming from is coming because of the this down conversion process that happens through the rf section okay so when you hit the base band when you hit the base band the by the time you come here Okay, so this is the analog to digital converter will be here, which is going to give you the discrete samples. Okay, and so we'll see how the discrete equivalent looks like. So by the time it hits, it already has the phase. And it is this phase is what the effect of the frequency offset is going to have the effect on my XT, which has my originally modulated symbols. Now, if I want to represent this, so now on the receiver side, this guy is going to go, this guy is going to go through the digital to analog to digital conversion process okay and then in that case I can represent this in the discrete form so how do I represent this guy into discrete form so I can say that well okay I will replace I can replace T by n times delta T okay this is symbolic um, but usually we omit delta T okay and we represent just X of n in terms of index and then we have e to the power of J delta omega delta omega t t i can replace by n times delta t again okay now this is no longer symbolic this is, has the actual values okay plus n of n or n times delta t now i'll just omit this delta t from these uh, indices okay um, we say that well it is implied delta t but not from here okay because this is just the for the representation sake so just for the sake of clarity um, what we'll do is um, let me change the color um, I hope that blue will be okay okay let's take this one so now what happens is if you're not familiar with the how the discrete equivalent happens then I suggest that you should go to the videos where analog discrete frequent uh, index mapping okay that is very important video if you want to understand how this mapping is going to occur so I will represent this entire thing here so I can say that well I'll, I'm also going to omit real part as well okay just assume that we 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 it is all real so in that case I can say that well it is x of xn okay on the discrete so it, this this is in the terms of the number of samples this is the sample number okay and then e to the power of j delta omega delta omega is what it is two times pi delta f correct it is two times pi delta f and what is t t is n times delta t remember this delta t is the sampling time delta t is my sampling time uh, if you and if you don't know how to map t into n times delta t i recommend you should go and watch the videos on the analog to discrete time frequency mapping okay so then i can say that well zero is less than equivalent to n less than equivalent to maybe some number n capital n okay and uh, this is the discrete equivalent of it um, but I can do some manipulation here so I know that well this is my sampling time right so inverse of sampling time is my sampling frequency okay so I can also say that well it is equivalent to xn e to the power of j 2 times pi delta f 
divided by fs times n okay so this is my final equation on the discrete form which has the frequency offset in it so now the question is how I'm going to program it so um, again I would insist that if you're not familiar how this mapping occurs you should go and watch the analog discrete time frequency mapping so at the end of the day you will see that each and every sample let us analyze this equation now each and every sample of this guy so when n equals to 0 which is the first sample okay so um, just to give you the visual interpretation or just to give you the insight what actually happens here um, when we have the frequency offset in my sy uh, symbols then um, let us say that I have sample number one sample number two sample number three and sample number four just hypothetically okay so this is sample one or uh, we can say zero sample first sample second sample and third sample so when n equals to zero when n equals to zero n equals to 0 here as well so e to the power of j 0 equals to 1 so nothing happens here so there is no phase okay there is no phase shift so I will say that well angle is 0 when n equals to 1 then in that case so the se first second sample right to x of 1 x of 1 is this guy x of 1 so what happens to the phase of that the, this sample is going to have a phase okay so when n equals to 1 it is two, 2 times pi delta f by fs right that will be the phase so can I say that well the phase is equal to 2 times pi delta f by fs can I say like that okay now what happens when n equals to 2 when n equals to 2 well it will be 2 times 2 times pi delta f by fs correct so here the angle is it will be 2 times 2 times 2 times pi delta f by fs and when n equals to 3 and so on okay it will go like that so um, the thing that we need to take from here is that each and every samples that you have okay in the time domain is going to have the incremental phase shift or the linear phase shift and the difference between the phase of these two will be the function of 2 times pi delta f by fs okay so I hope that um, this video is uh, helpful to you now in the next video I'm running short of time um, so let's make the bite-sized videos um, so that it is easy um, for everyone to download and um, so um, we'll discuss about how to program this numerically in our next video so I will see you in the next video and I hope uh, you have enjoyed this one